Well, how's it going, everybody? This is uh, Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. And um, this is our Live from the Bench show on Tuesdays at noon Eastern time. If you're new to this channel, uh, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it. We've got pre-recorded and pre-edited videos um, that we... Um, Upload a couple of times a week, all about guitar tone, guitar tech, all kinds of stuff. Some product reviews here and there. And uh, those are really cool as well. So you can check those out. Make sure you subscribe. Um, and this is live. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about guitar shielding. We actually started, we're starting in my living room today because I want to talk about why we do it. Um, and we're going to talk about the various uh, kinds of noise that there are in the guitar. So... Um, we're going to, I even took notes so that I wouldn't forget this stuff. I even took notes so that I wouldn't forget this stuff. And then I forgot where I put my notepad. How about that? Well, anyway, I guess we'll just try to make sure we remember it all. Okay. So first thing we want to do is we want to talk about why, uh, we even shield a guitar in the first place. There's a couple of different types of noise in the guitar. So when we uh, turn our guitar, our amp on and our guitar on, and we just let go of it and it makes that noise, it's supposed to make that noise. Everybody thinks it's not, but it's supposed to make that noise. The reason it makes that noise is because there is radio interference. There's electromagnetic interference coming through the air. See, a lot of people don't think, realize this, but electromagnetic interference comes through the air. It comes through anything that comes from anything that has a transformer in it. So, or two coils or a coil in it. And so when we think about electromagnetic interference, we think about um, televisions, radios. Uh, we may not think about CFL light bulbs, uh, even LED light bulbs, because they have a little transformer in them. And they emit electromagnetic interference, okay? And that goes through the air. Um, the other type of noise that we hear in our guitar or can hear in our guitar is that of a ground loop. So a lot of people will talk about ground loops and basically what that is, we're gonna do another video on that because that's its own thing. Basically what a ground loop is, is when you have two separate paths to ground, okay? So if we have, um, let's just use my living room for an example. So we have the TV up here and we have the home theater receiver is down here. You can't see it, but it's down there. They're both plugged into the wall. If we were to plug one in over there and plug one in over there, there would be a possibility that if I had an audio signal going between the television and the amplifier, that there could be a ground loop because there was two separate paths to ground, especially if both of those outlets were on different circuits. Okay, so the same thing can happen if you have a guitar and you have one cable going out, you have a cable coming down to a pedal and it splits it out to this amp and then it splits it out to this amp, those two amps are drawing two different amounts of current at one given time. And because you have an audio signal going between them, you've got two different ground potentials and that can cause what's called a ground loop. Because what it's doing is it's basically creating the second side of a transformer. But there are two things that need to be present for a ground loop to happen. One is you have to have current, lots of current. So transformer from a guitar amp and transformer from another guitar amp, and you have to have an audio signal that connects them. That gives you, and because of those two, more or less, there's, this gets really complicated, but more or less, if you have two paths to ground with two different vo uh, voltage or, and or current potentials, and they're pretty great, then you can have that uh, ground loop potential. The reason I bring this up is because people talk about it all the time because when we get into shielding the guitar and we talk about wiring the guitar and the shielding of the guitar and that sort of stuff, people think that you can have a ground loop in a guitar. It is not 
possible to have a ground loop in a guitar. Not possible. Why is that? Because you do not have separate pass to ground in a guitar. When you have two different guitar amps, you have separate pass to ground. But in a guitar, you do not have that. So, most of the time, as long as your pedal board has a nice isolated power supply, you know, like pedal train or, uh, you know, any of the, well, what do I like to use? I like to use uh, the CS7 or CS12. Anytime you have a good isolated power supply for your pedal board and you're using one guitar and one amp, you basically don't have to worry about ground loops. Basically. As long as all of your cables are good and you don't have any broken cables or anything causing any weird ground lifts in any of your pedals or any of that kind of stuff. So if you have healthy guitar cables, you have one amp, you have one guitar, and you have good pedal board isolation, ground loops are not a thing. It's not even in, it's not, it doesn't even apply, okay, to you. It only applies when you're getting into multiple amp situations and or monitoring situations where you have multiple pieces of equipment uh, together, a rack unit with some stuff in it, you know, all kind of, that sort of thing. That's when it matters. When you have, for instance, a Kemper going out to a mixing board and that mixing board and that Kemper are now, you know, connected together. And that's why I have a ground lift on the back of my, so I just wanted to get the ground loop thing out of the way because when we get into the guitar and we start talking about grounding and shielding in a guitar, people want to go super nuts with the way they ground a guitar, star grounding and all this. And it's just a bunch of crap. So let's get the ground loop thing out of the way. One amp, one guitar, good pedal board power supply, done. No ground loops. Don't really need to worry about it. As long as everything is healthy, don't need to worry about it. So let's go over here to the guitar and let's talk about actually shielding on a guitar. The reason it doesn't matter for ground loop wise in a guitar is because no matter what happens most for the most part in a passive guitar, in a passive guitar, um, we don't need to worry about anything more or less because there's one path to ground right here. This, the ground on the cable, one path to ground goes from here out to ground. Everything leaves the guitar through this guy right here. One path to ground. So whether you have two pots, three pots, five pots, a bunch of switches, whatever it is inside this guitar, it does not matter as long as it's all grounded because it is one singular path to ground through this ring, this sleeve right here. That's all you got to know. So when people want to do crazy star grounding stuff and do all this weird, like I need to solder all my grounds to the back of a pot and it needs to be a round circle. And then this needs to be grounded here. This needs to be grounded here. This needs to be grounded here. This needs, it's a bunch of crap because basically this is one ground, one ground plane, all of it going through one place, the sleeve of the cable. Sleeve of the cable goes out to your pedal board. Now, once it gets there, the ground loop can exist out there because we have, uh, you know, different potentials and stuff if you have multiple amps. That's what I'm getting at. But for the guitar, it does not matter. You cannot have a ground loop in a guitar, ever. You can't. As long as it's a conventional passive guitar, like normal setup. So that brings us back to the basically the only other kind of noise that really bothers us in a guitar, and that is electromagnetic interference. That comes from, like we talked about, all kinds of power supplies, this light over here that I'm using. Um, I've got some speakers here. In fact, you can actually see this. Let me show you. I actually bought, um, now this is cheap. This is, these are not, this is not like one of the multi-thousand dollar devices, but you know, I bought it on Amazon. But this thing is meant to show high levels of electromagnetic interference in your home because there have been studies to say that it's unsafe. Um, 
that's the jury's still out on all of that stuff. But the bottom line is we could put this next to a speaker. And by no contact, just putting it next to it, we can see electromagnetic interference. We can come back over here to the power supply of this light and we can find it. Now it's not reading an alarm, but it is there. Okay. So there is electromagnetic interference that emits from anything with a transformer. So that that you hear, especially in single coils, that is how it originates because if you think back to if you've ever bought a stereo, like even even the new ones, like that that's a what is that thing? Har, um, Harman Kardon. When you get it in the box, um, they'll give you that plastic ring, and it's got the wires wrapped around it. Okay, so that is an antenna. All it is is a piece of plastic with wires wrapped around it, and that's how you listen to AM radio. Well, what is a pickup? A pickup is just a core with wires wrapped around it. So it could be an antenna and it could pick up the same exact electromagnetic interference that we're picking up with this guy right here. Pretty interesting. So let's talk about how we capture electromagnetic interference. The way we capture electromagnetic interference, there's a couple of different things you can do and there's a couple of different myths. There's a couple of different myths surrounding it. Since it's flying through the air, more or less, we got to capture it and we got to bleed it off to ground before it gets to our amp. The trick is, is that coils is where it gets captured. So this is where our noise is going to come. So if we've got that light right there and we've got these speakers and we've got this TV and we've got all this stuff around, okay? Um, we could take our iPhone and like put it up to here and it would make weird noises, right? So we've got all those things happening in the air. So what do we have to do? Um, we have to capture that noise and we have to bleed it off to ground before it can be sent through as signal and we hear it. That's basically what we're doing. So the idea is, is that we want to basically create a satellite dish that captures all that noise and instead of sending it to the amplifier, sends it to ground. It's the same exact theory as Dish Network or anybody else. They have a dish with a coil that's literally a coil up at the end of that little stick. And instead of bleeding it to ground, they actually send it to an amplifier and then they convert it into television signal. We want to do the opposite. The coil that is our pickups, we want to protect that from that noise and send it to ground. That's all we need to do. So we're going to talk about how to do that because there's a lot of little myths and stuff surrounding that. So at this point, let's go ahead and go out to the garage and um, I'm going to show you how I shield stuff. I'm going to show you what I use and I'm going to show you some things that you don't need to worry about because they just don't need to happen. So let's go out to the shop. This is a battery powered light, so we're gonna shut that guy off. Let's come out here. And we're gonna talk about shielding and how to actually do it and what we use. And I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let's do this. Let's real quick get caught up here. Do, 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 do. Awesome. Okay, so we're caught up on questions. So let's talk about, sorry. I didn't have all this set properly before I came out here. Okay. So what we wanna do is we wanna create basically a satellite dish that takes all the noise that we capture in the air and bleeds it off the ground. The best way to do that is with the most square inches available. You want the biggest satellite dish, right? You want to be able to capture the whole thing as much as possible. So we put shielding tape on the back of 
a pick guard. And then, like on a telly, what we'll do is we'll run a piece of shielding tape down the side and make sure, or we'll just make sure that this piece of shielding tape somehow touches the ground uh, with the guitar. That's very important. You can't just capture the noise here. It has to bleed off the ground because the pickup is hooked up to ground. And if you just, if you don't ground this, what'll happen is it'll be worse. You'll literally, if you don't ground your pick guard, what literally will happen is it'll pick up noise and direct it to the pickup because the pickup is grounded and it will make it noisier. So you gotta make sure that you ground this in the guitar. Um, so what you're doing is you're taking the noise that comes through the air, you're, it's hitting here and it's bleeding off the ground so that it doesn't go to the amp. That's basically what's happening. Now, when we shield stuff, we want to make sure that we can get as many square inches as possible to get as big of a satellite dish, basically, as we talked about. And one of the things you got to make sure of, and uh, there's a link in the description to this video for the shielding tape that I use. You can go to Stumac, you can go all over the place and get this stuff, but it's really expensive. And there's a place on Amazon that sells, it's actually landscaping, it's for landscaping. Uh, apparently slugs don't cross copper. So you can put um, this stuff on, like on little borders and gardens and stuff and it will keep your, it keeps slugs out of your garden apparently. I, I don't have that problem so I didn't know that. But, um, but what you wanna be sure of is to make sure that the glue that's on it is conductive because this whole thing needs to be grounded to be effective. If just this half is grounded, then just this half is effective. The whole thing needs to be grounded to be effective. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just take a little drop of solder and pop a little drop of solder on, just, just one little drop, on each of these seams just to make sure that the whole thing is grounded all the way across, okay? Um, theoretically, a tele pickup with a cover is shielded. But you gotta remember that we're talking about square inches here, not just, because we're gonna get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, yes, and it will keep slugs out of the guitar. So that's the thing, that's what we wanna do. So, there was something else I was gonna mention here. Anyway, this tape, I think this tape literally costs like 20 bucks. And it's tons of it. I, you, it's lasts forever. Um, yes. So the reason the the noise goes away when we touch it is because we are part of the circuit, because we basically are the shielding, because we we are all water. So when we touch something, the we take that load. Basically, instead of a shield, we take that load. When we touch the guitar, we take that load and we are grounded. So therefore, the noise goes away. That's the, the easiest way to say it. There's more technicality to it than that, but that's the easiest way to say it. Now, here's the other thing. That people get crazy about. Does your tape have conductive adhesive? Yes. It's not mine. It's just on Amazon. There's a link. Anytime you use these Amazon links, I make like five cents, but it does help me. So uh, feel free to use those to get this stuff. That it does help me out. I really appreciate it. It's no cost to you. It doesn't raise the price of the product or anything, but it does help me out um, keeping all this ship running. So, um, I mean, I'll probably only make like five cents off of a roll of tape, but thank you for doing that. It'd be awesome. Um, cause it's like an affiliate link. So you briefly mentioned, somebody briefly mentioned, um, uh, pickup that has a, has a cover on it, which leads us to the other thing that people get all bent about. People want to go on and on and on and on and on and on all day long about a Faraday cage and how they've got to shield everything and blah, 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 blah. Super annoying. Super 
annoying. So let's discuss shielding the control cavity of your guitar and how useless it really is. The center of the noise in a guitar is the pickups. Your controls do not make noise. People will say that the wires in the control cavity can act as an antenna. In theory and on paper, this is true. However, in order for that to be true, there needs to be inductance, voltage, inductance, or voltage, or current. Uh, and there actually always kind of needs to be inductance. So like an AM antenna doesn't have any voltage in it, and it doesn't have any current in it. But because of that coil that it has, um, which is probably usually about like 50, 60 feet of wire, um, then it can become an antenna. But like three feet of single conductor wire or one and a half feet of single conductor wire in a guitar cannot become an antenna to any audible changeable, traceable, trackable way. And you can actually take one of those EMI meters and you can actually take one of those uh, EMI meters that I just had and you can plug a guitar in and turn the volume up and you can move that EMI meter around and you can see where the noise comes from in the guitar. It's the pickup and then it is not detectable by the control cavity. Now the only thing is, is that the only time it's useful to shield the control cavity is when you don't have a pick guard on the guitar and for some reason you cannot shield around the pickups. Um, so like on a Les Paul aisle, yeah, so let's say you have a guitar with two P90s in it, shield the pickup cavities and if you wanted to shield the cover that goes over, over it and ground that, just to get some square inches on there, that's cool. Because you're just trying to get some square inches on there. But it is not necessary to take all that time and do all that really pretty copper stuff all inside there and make a Faraday cage because it's not doing a damn thing. In fact, it is not a Faraday cage at all. <laughs> a Faraday cage, the, the way a Faraday cage works, just so you know, is let's say we have voltage. We're gonna miniaturize ourselves down. So let's say we're inside a guitar, I'm in a garage right now, but let's say we're inside a guitar control cavity, okay? And we've got foil over all these walls and the ceiling and the floor and we've got voltage coming in from the outside. We will be shielded from that as long as the frequency is not too strong and not too high, okay? So um, we can be shielded mostly from it. It will still come through a little bit, but we can mostly be shielded from it if we are not touching it. So we can literally come over here and now ground ourselves to the wall and we will then conduct whatever inter interference is coming from the outside. A Faraday cage is made to encapsulate and isolate a device inside of it. So like a computer um, inside a shielded room um, and in and in let's see, like an ignition system in a car that's in a box, that's inside a box, but, but it's not grounded to the box. There's like a box around it. That is how it works. Here's the thing though. Instrument, that, instrument uh, cavities on a guitar are not isolated to the inside. 
I don't think people, people blow my inbox up about this all the time and I don't think they've given it really the thought that they should. So here's a Telecaster. You create a Faraday cage around here, inside here, but then ground the component to it, it makes no sense. A Faraday cage only matters if the device is completely is isolated inside of it. If you use the side of the Faraday cage as a ground, it's not a Faraday cage anymore. It doesn't matter. It's totally worthless. It's totally pointless. The only time shielding on a control cavity has a point is when you're just doing it to get more square inches because you don't have any more, you know, you don't have a pick guard. Like you don't have anywhere to put shielding on a guitar and hide it, right? Like, cause you don't want it to show. So you put it somewhere. So you use the, the, so you put the, you know, you put it in the instrument panel cavity uh, because you just need that space. But it's not doing anything at all to stop noise from the controls because the controls don't make noise. And what's really interesting about that is a 60 hertz wave as it comes through the air is 18.8 18 .8 feet long. A half wave is 9.4 is feet long. So whether you shielded this little baby thing or not, it doesn't make any difference. And like I said, once you ground a component to the side of it, it does not work anymore. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You would literally, okay, in order to make a fair, okay, let's do this. Let's talk about this. This is kind of cool. I've never actually gotten to this point. You would, in order for this to be a proper Faraday cage, you would literally have to like, Plasti dip this and isolate the pot from here so that this does not conduct through here to here to here and then put this on top of it and so that this would not this would be a hundred percent completely isolated for it to be a Faraday cage it had to be it would have to be isolated it can't be grounded so Faraday cages are pointless in electric guitars. They're just pointless. Um, in fact, you have no idea how many times I get a phone call saying, I installed your pickups and everything's dead. There's something wrong with this pickup. When I switch it over to here, something's dead. And the very first thing I say is, do me a favor and send me a picture of your wiring just so I can look at it and, and get a reference of, of everything. 99% of the time, Oh, the output jack was touching the foil. Oh, the switch was touching the foil on one side. Uh, it's a pain. It's absolutely a pain. There's no reason to have it. No reason at all to have it. Unless you're trying to get some square inches for some single coils. If you have P90s that are that noisy, just buy some. Just get some new ones. Because it's more effective than doing that. Way more effective. Let's see. Um, okay. For guitars without large pickups, pick guards, are we count counting on the shielded braided wire to do the job of the copper tape? No, because there's not enough square inches there. Number one. Number two, if you have humbuckers, none of this matters. Everybody wants to shield humbucker guitars to make them quieter. It doesn't matter. I mean, you could get a marginal amount of benefit from it. You out of here? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Love you. Um, you can get a marginal benefit from it, but it's not worth doing. Let's see. I had a problem with noise on a bass because its design had very long cables from the pickups to the upper horn pot and to the jack placement. It was fixed by replacing the hot wire with shielded wire. Bases are interesting because, first of all, they are longer. Second of all, they're very finicky about something else that could have fixed this, by the way, um, is flipping both of your pickup wires. Um, I've had this happen before as well. They're very finicky about what start wire is hooked up. So let's say my wife's leaving. 
So let's say you have a pickup and you start the coil and one is, one is the start wire and one is the finish wire. And this is the start wire and this is the finish wire and you hook them up to your pots and stuff in a base and you get lots of noise. One second. Give me just one second. Sorry about that. Um, she got in the truck and then the Bluetooth picked up my, my phone is what happened. Let's see. Yeah, so she, when she got in the truck, sorry about that. Uh, when she got in the truck um, and, and she's actually taking her full runner, but when she got in the truck and started it, there was uh, the Bluetooth <laughs> took over and then I didn't have my phone for a second. I had to shut my Bluetooth off. All right, let's see. Um, okay, so shielded wire Okay, so we we're talking about a base. So in a base, sometimes um, if the negatives are hooked up as the hot, it makes a noise. And sometimes if the positives are hooked up at, as the hot, it makes a noise. And sometimes you've got to like flip them around and the noise goes away. It's a weird, bases do that. It's a, it's a weird thing. And honestly, I, I'd have to think about why. I just remember having that problem a couple times on a couple jazz bases. And... You can't flip one because then the polarity is wrong, so you got to flip them both. But like literally, the negatives are the positive, and the positive are the negatives because the wind direction was different, and that noise went away. That probably would have fixed that base too. Um, maybe we should just laminate a layer of foil or metal under the top between the body of the guitar. Yeah, like on a Les Paul. That would be awesome. That would actually be killer. Um, if you guys recall, some of you may not have been following along following me long enough but a few years ago we built a telly with an aluminum top we did like three of them and they were the quietest guitars ever made because it was just a huge shield it was they were amazing they were amazing super quiet um shielded wire versus wrapping the positive and negative wires is that the same thing yep basically pretty much um there again a lot of people get really stuck on this whole possibility that there will be noise because of the control cavity. But there has to be voltage and there has to be or current for this to happen. Um, if you so that being so what I mean by that is this little baby light right here that I've got on my desk won't make as much noise like EMI noise electromagnetic interference as say the soldering station over here like this really big soldering station that I have or let's say the microwave in the kitchen this little light won't make that much noise it has to do with the amount of current and voltage going through whatever transformer is there it's a tiny little transformer in this LED light at 12 volts and at probably, what, 300 milliamps or something, as opposed to the microwave, which is 25,000 volts and, you know, 13 amps and, you know, like it, it's, it has, all that stuff has to be present. Because the more voltage you have, the higher the inductance, the more it can throw off. And so, and on the other end of it, catching it has to be the same. It has to be the same way. And you just don't have that in the control cavity of a guitar. You just don't. 
I know that the science says that it exists and it is true. But in practical, real life terms, the voltage, the current, and the inductance in the control cavity of the guitar is not there. And being this far away is far enough to make a difference. So one of the other questions that always comes up is, won't this suck the tone out of my guitar? Let's see. Oh yeah, dude, if you can use an aluminum scratch plate on a Jazzmaster, dead quiet, super fun. Love those, love those a lot. Um, so a lot of people wanna know, cause they'll say, yeah, well I, but I heard when I put this on here and then it, like my tone was screwed up and it sucked the tone out of my guitar. There's a thing called an eddy current, okay? Um, let me see if I can duplicate this here. I don't know if I can do it. This magnet might not be strong enough. No, I can't. There's a video, if you go back through my YouTube on the old, my older videos, like episode 12 or something, I did a video about eddy currents and we actually stuck a magnet to a piece of aluminum and it stuck to it. Um, eddy currents are a thing. They definitely are a thing. However, however, there again, there has to be voltage and there has to, and or current, okay, for eddy currents to exist. And in a guitar right at the pickup, and we're talking 150 thousandths or hundred thousandths or 90 thousandths away from the top of the surface of the magnets, you can introduce eddy currents with a regular um, pickup cover. You can do that. It does happen. The minute you move it from 50 thousandths away to 190 thousandths away, the effect of that drops off so dramatically that it's a non-issue. So people that say that putting a bridge pickup on a, in a Telecaster in the metal plate versus not in the metal plate introduces eddy currents, it's not possible. The math is not there because it has to be, for eddy currents to exist, there has to be a completely flat surface like this with no breaks in it, and it has to be so close that the distance has to be proportionate to the strength of the magnetic field and the inductance of the coil and the voltage present. None of those things is strong enough to be effective more than about this far away. So, no, it will not change the tone in your guitar. Mathematically, it is not possible. I wanna do another video on that because it's a, it's a really interesting thing. And there are some interesting phenomena that happen in science with eddy currents. However, people want to take a science and apply it to the guitar because the science exists. But the fact is that the voltage, 300 millivolts with no current um, and like three and a half Henry's from a, from a Strat pickup or less is not enough of anything to be measurable. It's not enough of anything to be measurable. So people get all twisted about all this stuff and then they say, well, yeah, but I heard a difference. I mean, you could say that all you want, I guess. People say a lot of things about what they think affects what, but the math and the science just does not support it, period. Um, let's see, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, see, so you put an aluminum pickguard on a Strat and you didn't hear any difference because it was a humbucker. Exactly. Is static electricity on a pickguard related to the electrons due to factory shielding of the pickguard? Um, actually, that doesn't happen on a shielded pickguard. Um, it happens on a non-shielded pickguard. Yeah, so like you uh, get a Strat or something. My Strat did this too. You get a Strat and you like rub your fingers like that on it and it'll go, right? Static electricity is just static electricity, but uh, you put shielding on the back and it'll stop it. I've heard people do weird stuff like rub toothpaste on it and junk like that, but um, you can actually spray it with um, like anti-static spray, 
but any static spray is silicone and I don't put silicone anywhere around my guitars um, at all. So I wouldn't do that. So there's that. Shielding. It's not that hard. To properly shield a guitar, put as many square inches as you can, get away with doing on the guitar. Make sure they're grounded. And make sure that the tape that you use has glue that is conductive. Um, you could use shielding paint if you want. I don't like to use shielding paint. But people, like I said, people go nuts with shielding paint in places where they don't need it either. So, you know, you don't need to put shielding paint in a control cavity. You just don't need to. Um, make sure that your seams have a dot of solder on them to, to keep everything cool. And uh, yeah, man, that's all it is. You just got to make sure this is grounded, though. You just got to make sure that's grounded. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. In fact, it can introduce noise if possible. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, keep the conversation going in the comments. And make sure that you share this video with as many people as possible. Next Tuesday, what should we talk about next Tuesday? Why don't I put silicone on a guitar? because it wreaks havoc with working on anything in the future. Um, and I've seen it do terrible things to finishes. You do not want to put it on nitro ever. And yeah, no, we don't use silicone based products at all in our shop. I don't use WD-40, we don't use nothing. Um, I used to manage a collision shop when I was younger and I've seen silicone do crazy, crazy things and I will not have it around. Silicone is an oil. It's like a petroleum based uh, product. And so what happens is it never really comes off. Um, if you put silicone on a pick guard and you go like this, it'll, you can feel it and see it on there and you know, it, it does not come off. And so you can't solder on it. You can't, I mean, you can, you, but you have to clean it up. It just, it, it, there's so much damage that can be done to guitars with two things, steel wool, and silicone not in this shop anywhere at all either of them ever um, yeah man have you wrapped shielding around a single coil pickup itself I have uh, it works a little but it doesn't work as good as this we're trying to catch stuff that's coming through the air satellite dish works better it just does because you're capturing more. Um, so yeah, I've done it. I've done it on strats. I've seen guys do crazy stuff where they put like a piece of tape around a strat pickup and then they solder a thing to it and it's cool, but it doesn't work as good as this. Just do your pick card. Yep. That's, that's all it is. Um, what are we going to talk about next week? We should talk about something else next week. And in the last few weeks, I've actually been giving you the opportunity to do this. I will tell you, on these live things, I'm not going to go crazy. We're not going to do like, hey, can you show me how to do some crazy switching that one person in the world is ever going to use and solder this crazy circuit? And we're not going to do that stuff. We want to keep it more simple, more fundamental to guitar players, more audience. Um, I feel like that is really important. Um, yeah, I've used, I've used aluminum to shield before. In fact, I've done it quite often. The problem is you can't solder to it. So if you can't put a wire in it somehow, or like stick a screw in it or something, it's, it, you can't ground it very well. It's, it doesn't ground very easily. Um, and it tears easy and it doesn't work as good. And so, I, no, I like to use this because you can solder to it. Um, cause the way I do these, just so you know, like on a telly, the way I do this is cause this mates up like this. I take another piece of tape. Uh, here, let's just, let's just rip a piece off and I'll show you. So I take another piece of tape like this and I put it on the guitar, you know, like where it's going down in there. Uh, like this 
and then I solder I solder a wire to it or depending on how it sits in there sometimes I'll actually um, nah, that's pretty much how I do it is solder uh, this will stick to the guitar so that when you put this on top of it it's sitting on there like that and then that grounds this and it's sticking out underneath there and that grounds this and it grounds this to the pickguard. So you just take a piece of tape, stick it on the guitar and let it run down in there and it'll be sticking out kind of like this. And then when you put your cover on, it touches that and you put the screw through and everybody's together. That's how I do it on a telly. Um, and it's nice and clean. You don't see it, you know. Because sometimes you gotta get a little creative, you know, like on guitars with uh, with no pick art, you know, sometimes you gotta get a little creative on how you can get as many square inches as possible on there, like with a P90 guitar. But we just make quiet P90s. I don't, to tell you the truth, you guys, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, this is the first time I've put shielding on a pick art in probably three years. I don't shield anything and the reason I don't shield anything is because my pickups are so good that I don't care about it and if my pickups aren't that good I go back to the drawing board so I just make it to where I don't need it and some people will say well that guitar is a little noisy or I'll get a custom build and somebody will say I really want it super quiet okay no problem we'll shield it I built a, a guitar for uh, uh, one of the guitar players for um, Reba McIntyre, and he works in a he works in a studio a lot. Um, he tours with her, but then he also works in the studio a lot. And he's like, I really it had two P90s in it. He's like, I really want this thing to be super super quiet. And it was hollow body, and I literally lined the entire guitar with aluminum. It was so such a pain, l l real thin aluminum, and it made it really heavy. But it was really quiet, and he and he liked it. So you know, but other than that, I mean, that was probably three years ago. I don't shield anything. Because I figure if it needs it, then I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Um, wax potting has nothing to do with shielding. Just so you know. Everybody, that's another little crossover that people try to make. But wax potting has nothing to do with shielding. Um, what would make a pickup noisy? What would make a pickup noisy? Hang on, it's moving in terms of construction. Uh, quality of wire, quality of magnets, and consistency of wind, it all comes into it. Um, I know that's a terribly generic answer, but it is true. Um, it is very true. Quality of magnets is a big one. Because it pulls out frequencies that you don't want. And, uh, and it, yeah, I mean, that, I don't really have an answer for that, except for quality of the quality of the wire is a big one. What is the thickest wire you can use on pickups? Uh, what Charlie Christians uses thirty eight, right? Thirty eight or thirty nine gauge, something like that. Really super, which is not much thinner than this. This is thirty three. Wait, yeah, this is thirty three. So I think Charlie Christians use 39 or 40, something like that. Uh, the thinnest, the thickest we use around here is 42. It's 42 sim single build. Um, pickup frequencies and interference, does vintage versus overwound matter? Overwound's a dumb word. I don't use it um, because overwound doesn't mean anything. Um, because if you have one pickup that has five winds on it and you have one pickup that has six winds on it, is six overwound? No, it just has more winds. Um, and the references that people use for overwound is dumb because they made pickups a certain way in the 50s and they made pickups a certain way in the 60s and then 68 was different than 66 and you know it's just stupid. So sometimes you basically just have to say, look, what year of guitar are we talking about here? Is that what you want? Okay, I'll do it. I want it overwound. 
Do you want the 1958 overwound 5%? Do you want a 1966 overwound 5%? Do you want a 1972 overwound 5%? Or what? So I don't use that term around here. I think it's stupid. Um, but the, it's the quality of the, the, the products. It's the quality of the materials that you use in the pickup have more to do than um, with the wind count. Because I've got pickups here that have, I mean, I've got a humbucker here that has 18K with 43 gauge wire. And then I got uh, filter trons that come all the way down to four and a half K with 42 gauge wire. So, and they're all quiet. Um, well, those are both humbuckers, but single coils. I've got single coils that go come down to 4.6K, like there's lipsticks, and then single coils that go up to 10K in a P90, and they're all the exact same amount of quiet, so it doesn't much matter. Um... Yeah, I mean having it so having a guitar with a ton of pickups affects noise depending on how it's wired. So strats a lot of times are reverse wound, reverse polarity. Um, so in the notch positions, the two and four positions, it's like basically like a humbucker but in parallel. Um, and so it's just as quiet. So you don't really have extra noise. If you put two single coils in series, um, it can be noisier if they are phase the same way. So if you have clockwise north up, clockwise north up, and you put them in series, like a humbucker, they'll be twice as noisy as one pickup. So if you have a bunch of pickups in a drawer and you put them in a strat and they're really noisy in one position, chances are it's because you have matching polarity and they're, they're doubling up their noise. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't put those pickups together, you just have to wire them correctly so that they are quiet. That's the answer to that. You guys, this has been fun, man. I appreciate it. Do me a favor and keep it going in the comments below. It is pouring rain here. That's why I'm a little distracted. Like I'm almost worried the power's gonna go out. <laughs> um, I really appreciate everybody hanging out. If you have any questions or anything you wanna talk about next week, please put it in the comments. And uh, since we didn't talk much about that, uh, I won't keep this going just for the sake of figuring that out, but we can throw it in the comments below and we will do something else live next Tuesday at noon. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please hit the button. Do you know, we only have 11,000 subscribers on this channel and I get emails like every day. How come people don't have, how come you don't have more subscribers on your channel? Your stuff is amazing. We have one, almost 1 1.3 million views on our channel with only 11,000 subscribers. And here's why. 62% of the views on our channel are from people that have not subscribed. So please subscribe to the channel. It would really, really be awesome because what that does is it just gives us more traction in the search engine stuff. Um, and I've told you guys this many times before. I don't make a lot of money doing this. In fact, I don't really make any money doing this. Um, the business is making pickups. That's what I do. That's how I make my living. Um, it is my real job. I do not have a second job. I do not work somewhere and then do this on the weekends. This is my real job. I, I make pickups and I build guitars and I make YouTube videos. The YouTube videos, I will tell you last month I made $103. So it does not add revenue from YouTube, does not pay the bills. Um, so it's not about the money. It's about helping as many people out as we can. And uh, with stuff like this, and saving you money and helping you, you know, make uh, choices. And so 62% of the people that watch our videos are not subscribed. So it would be amazing if you could subscribe to the channel and share it with somebody else. Cause I do want to grow it. I do want to keep it going um, for as long as I possibly can. Uh, but I need your help to do that. And then like, you know, using those, every time we share links and stuff, um, not always, but sometimes they're affiliate links. Like I said, I really only make like five or 10 cents on each thing, but it scales up. And if it means that I make 50 bucks this month off of affiliate links and I can actually go buy a piece of equipment like I did to make a video about it, that's what I use it for. So, um, 
I put it back into the videos and stuff. So um, I really appreciate everybody's support. It has been fantastic. Thanks for hanging out with me this week. Uh, make sure you subscribe, share this with everybody, and we will talk to you um, next Tuesday for sure. And then between now and then, we're probably going to have one or two more videos come out. And we're probably going to have like a little five to ten minute little shorter video on shielding that you'll be able to share with people as well. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for hanging out.